it's Thursday, and it's time again for Bible study, amen? And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the Word of God, amen? Man, we have been having such a wonderful time in this new series that I started on the first Thursday of June. I started first with talking about, the, well, the whole series that we started actually in May, about things that people say that's in the Bible that's not in the Bible. So uh, for, Ju for June, uh, our first week was God wants you to be happy. Our second week was follow your heart. That's not in the word. So now let's go and take a look at this week's topic, which is to thine own self be true. That's not in the word. All right. So as usual, the purpose of a Bible study is to uh, encourage the people of God with the word of God. And I study from the New Living Translation. Please share this with your friends and family so that they too can hear as we study the word of God. Okay. So, as I said, our topic today is today to thy own self be true. That is not in the word of God. To thine own self of true, to, to thine own self be true is in Hamlet. Being true to myself without any context could mean that I will act sinfully or irresponsibly because it is what I really feel like doing. The Bible represents or uh, should I say the Bible presents authenticity as doing what it is true and right, being honest and genuine, even if you don't feel like it, or even if it is to your disadvantage. So, in other words, we have this saying that says to thyself be true. And people tend to say, oh, that stuff is in the Bible. No, it's not in the Bible as I'm discussing this entire series. I'm pulling out phrases and colloquial sayings and things that people deem to be uh, found in the word. This one, to thy own self be true, just like the others. Um, well, I think I did do uh, a, a little change of one, one or two of them, but you have to go back and check the series. But anyway, the fact of the matter is people will say anything at any given time and say, oh, that the Bible says, or God said, God didn't say none of that. The Bible didn't say none of that. Why are we saying that if God don't say it? So let's move ahead now and take a look at scripture. To thine own self be true, um, meaning that you are making yourself uh, over everything that God is trying to say to you or tell you to do. And you are going to put your thoughts as more important than God's thoughts. And you are not going to surrender to what he tells you to do. Amen. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what God says to do and how you are to surrender yourself to him and allow him to, to be the truth in your life. Because let's face it, our, our nature is we will lie quicker then speak the truth. If you look at a, a two-year-old baby, a, a, a child that's an infant, two, three, four, three, let's say a three-year-old, and you tell that three-year-old, do not touch these cookies that's in the jar. Okay, mommy. Okay, daddy. And you walk out that room. I give them 10 minutes. They're in that jar. And when you come back and say, what happened to that cookie? They got crumbs all over their mouth. They got crumbs all over the house and they're going to say, I didn't touch it because that's the way we are built. We are bent from, from birth to lie. We're bent from birth never to speak the truth. And so we get better at bolder as we get older. And now we created to thine own self be true. So let's see what God says about that. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So not just do whatever you feel like or you feel like doing it because it's true to you. No. What is it true to God? Verse 2 says... Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. Fancy that. 
but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And most importantly, true because God is truth and God never lies. Isaiah 44, 22 says, I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your offenses like the morning mist. Oh, return to me, for I have paid the price to set you free. The price was paid. We have no reason to lie. We have no reason to stumble back in to sin because it was already handled by by God the Father because he sent Jesus Christ the Son that gave his life on the cross for me and for you. Amen. Isaiah 51 7 says listen to me you who know right from wrong you who cherish my laws in your hearts do not be afraid of people's scorn nor fear their insults. As long as you're being true, as long as you're following the path as God called you to, do not listen to the crowd. Do not follow social media. Do not let anything influence you beside God the Father. He's the only influencer you need in your life. Amen? Romans 8.1 says, Life in the Spirit. Right? This is Romans 8, 1 says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So you speak your truth. You speak God's truth. Because sometimes our truth got a little bit of something, something on it because we're trying to hide something or we're not trying to be upfront and, and truthful. But we should always be speaking God's truth. 1 John 1, 9 says, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Yeah, we need to be cleansed from all wickedness. Amen? And that comes when we recognize that we have sin to confess. We need to be truthful to God. That's how you get away from that. Jeremiah uh, 17, 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked who really knows how bad it is because we are not being truthful. Psalm 54, Psalm 51, 4 says, Against you and you alone have I sinned. Why? Because God's the creator of all things. He is the owner of everything you see. He owns you and he owns me. I have done what is evil in your sight because God is the only person that we need to listen to and to be concerned about their opinion, not man, only God's. You, you will be proved right in what you say. That's what God, what God says. And your judgment against me is just. And we have to recognize that. God's judgment against us is just because he's going to be truthful and he is not doing anything contrary to himself. He is clean. He is pure. He is honest. He is righteous and he is just. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Okay, are you ready for it? You should know this by heart. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things, and these things are truth. That's what we should give our lives into, gear our lives around at every corner. If, an, if you have an option to lie, be truthful and speak God's truth. Amen. Romans 13, 14 says, instead, 
Clothe yourself for the presence of God. Ooh, let me back up. That, that's so good. Let me start over. Romans 13, 14 says, Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. It's not truthful. It's not honest. It's not pure. And it's not godly. Luke 14.33 says, So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Because God is about us giving up not only the material things, children of God, but also giving up the spiritual things, things that only he can tell what you're doing, things that is hidden from the, the naked eye, that you have, you know in your heart, you got to give those things up too because you want to be clean and you want to be true. You want to be truthful as well. First Peter 2, 20 and 24 says, Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. That's verse 20. 21 says, For God calls you to do good, even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. And we know that Jesus never spoke any ill, and he never spoke any falsehoods, or any white lies, or any small lies, or any dis anything that's dishonest in any way. He spoke only the truth at all time. Verse 23 says, well, let me go back to 22. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. Remember that we're following his example. 23 says he did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. Verse 24 says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that he can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Children of God Truthfulness should come out of our mouth at all times. But truthfulness that lines up with the word of God. Not you being true to your own self, which means you're going to follow your own heart, your own way of thinking. And somehow, some way, you can sneak in small lies, white lies, untruths, and to be deceptive. God is not about you being deceptive. You should look at everything that you do and remember that the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. So he hears when you step out of line. He hears when you say things that's not true. He knows exactly what you're saying and who you're saying it to. So make sure that your life reflects who you belong to and where you intend to end up. Because this is not our home. Amen? We intend to end up in heaven. So we have to live now like we're going there. Amen? So we're praying for Lydia, Adiana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, Owen, Shackle for Family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Julian Walker, Donna, Franklin Brown, Marlene, Lee Mullins, Tracy Sisko, Leonie Walker, Pastor Teal, Ro, Mario French, Mario French, Michael Moore, Grace Appleby, Carolyn Charles Thomas. We're praying for Andre, Grant Family, Linda, Doral, Paulette, Lucinda. We're praying for Anne Philbert. We're praying for Israel, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa. We're praying for all the countries all in the world. Margaret and family, Maxine, Seneca Brinkley. We're praying for Brenda Lawrence. We're praying for all people everywhere. We are still in this wonderful um, 
study about things that people say that God said that's in the Bible and it's not in there, I know you are so rooted to your seats to see what I'm going to come up with next week. But I thank God for what he has done. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now, Lord Jesus, that you just walk with us and talk with us, Lord, as we go along this journey. Lord, you are so good to us and we're so grateful that we can call on your name and know that you're sending the response. Help us to guard our mouth and our tongues, Lord God, and to speak truth at all times and not to be led by common opinions or allow anybody else's thoughts crowd in our minds so that it crowds, crowds out your thoughts and your ways and your truths. We thank you, Father God, because you are able to keep us and hold us as we walk upright and as we in, as you enable us to be the children you've called us to be. We are so grateful for every opportunity that we get to speak to someone else about the kingdom. Bless us now, Lord God, as we leave from this study on today. But let us be mindful that you are Lord over all, including our tongues, and that we will speak truth going forwards in season and out of season. We love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. I'll see you next week as we continue this series. Be blessed. Bye-bye.